Do you want to boost the performance of your Unray NAS? Do you want to add another way of avoiding drive failure? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about two ways to implement a cache drive in Unray. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytesworithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we'll be covering in this video, and that's how to implement a cache drive on your Unraid NAS system. First, what is a cache drive? You may not have heard of that. We'll talk about the required items then we'll look at a single drive and then we'll go with a raid one cache drive and yes i did say raid one for those of you who haven't heard of a cache drive before this is something really i think that's going to be very interesting to try out because i've already benchmarked the amount of time it takes to copy about 30 gigs of data over to unrate and i want to see personally how much the cache drive is going to do and i'll give you all those figures at the end here's what we're looking at in terms of the diagram this is going to network traffic and there's two different ways you can send data to Unraid. And first is through a cache drive, which is typically going to be an SSD because you want it to be a fast drive because the faster it can offload it off the network, then on a predetermined schedule, it will copy it to your drive pool back here. If you're not in a hurry or it's files of different sizes, then you can set things up in such a way so that it does not go through the cache drive. A couple of things to remember with a cache drive. If it fills up before the mover script is run, you'll get an error that the drive is full. When it's not really your array of drives that's full, it's the cache drive. Depending on what you're doing, you'll have to kind of figure out what's going to be the best way of sizing the drive so that you don't run into that problem. Or if you're going to copy large amounts of data, periodically run the mover script and that should get around it. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just a matter of how much data you plan to move between the intervals that you're going to set up for the mover script to run. Now, here's two kinds of SSD drives that we're looking at. First question I have is, which one of these is different from the other? It's the one on the left, and here's why. The PNY is a single drive. This, In the case of this one, this is actually 120 gig. I had this from another server project, which is I'm repurposing some of the hardware. That's option one. Here's the little gem that I think is going to be somewhat of a game changer. You've got all these drives in a big array except for this one. And if this one fails, you could be up a river without a proverbial pow. In steps the QNAP dual M.2. Where this differs is we've got, let me get one of them over here. I've got two different, well, it fell out of the container, but that's why I'm on an anti-static map. I'm going to put in two of the Kingston 240 gig drives, and they are in a RAID 1 configuration, and that's at a hardware level, because you set the switches. You can see right here, you can have individual drives, RAID 1, RAID 0, or j -Bot. Well, I'm going to go for RAID 1, and that's its default configuration. Putting these drives in is going to be the same no matter what. There's going to be an initialization process and all that. This one takes a a little bit of putting together so that what we're going to do next so let me switch over here and i'm going to zoom out just a little bit to give us some room if you don't already have a very good miniaturized or miniature screwdriver set this minnow from ifixit is the one that you need to think about because it's got everything you need it's like 15 dollars off amazon what we're going to do is i'm going to go in here and we'll first we'll first remove the screws and this is where the minnow is handy because it's got a little lid with individual dividers in it and unfortunately we can't really let's see if i can get this to, we can see it a little bit better so we'll get all these drives removed and we'll just drop the screws here because i don't know about you i seem to always lose a bunch of screws in the carpet and getting to other things so this way we can keep them all together now they're all in there reasonably safe from harm so we'll open the lid this is an all metal enclosure here so this is something that is going to be very good at heat dissipation you can see you can go all the up from the smaller drives theoretically but this one is directly keyed to the 2280 format there's a few things we need to get out of the bag and you can see they sent a whole lot of tape heat transfer tape then we sent a couple of screws now this little piece right here is how you can change the qnap device from raid one to whatever you want to and it does come set up for raid one there's the legend so you don't have to worry about it 
verify that before you start it's in raid one so i'm leaving it in raid one but that little piece keep that handy both of these are only single-sided drives so what we'll want to do there's several kinds of thermal transfer tape we will put one on the back of the drive and center it in such a way that when you put the tape on and before you press down make sure that you've got that out of the way of the fingers and that you're not blocking the screw hole press that down we don't have have to give it a king kong press but we'll be doing more here in just a bit we will put the first one in here then we'll take one screw and we will get that firmly attached again just give it just a slight tighten there's no reason to run the thing all the way down and possibly risk cracking something again we'll go here and make sure that we don't have the screw hole block we will peel that off we will plug that in the drive just ever so gently insert it go up here just a little bit I'm trying to get the screw in my my fingers here so we'll tighten that down that's got one part of it taken care of we now also need to put transfer tape on top of both the drives and again just like before we will put it so that it's covering the the chips on top as best it can without causing any blockage to the screw hole because we're adding a little bit of bulk to this may have to press just a little bit to get this whole cabinet to go back together now that we've got everything in it's, it's got a little more weight to it now so that's not as bad as i thought it might be so we'll grab our driver they are not sponsoring this although i do like their products an awful lot and that's why you're seeing me on top of an iFixit and a static mat get all these put back together and again just i almost call it a finger tighten i do not want to really tighten the things down heavily missing one screw and it was one of the magnets that was holding it get that put together that's all set to go and that's all there is to it so now we will get the server open and get that put in now i've got the case off the one U server and this is the one that you saw me use in a couple of the other videos about it's the chenbro is the name of it they've got a space right over here in the corner unfortunately i can't get the camera swung over there real well so what we will do is just come over here plug in the two cables that are needed and that i'm just going to set this down here for right now there's so much cabling over it that i don't have any concern about it moving i'm obviously going to have to get another bracket for it this way i'm leaving my main base clear for using hard drive you could have put it over here it's just that there happened to be a good space over for it here that way like i said i'm i'm keeping the big spots open here i'm gonna have to come up with probably a bracket that's gonna make a little better sense it's probably an adapter but that's something that we can do down the road so let me get the lid back on and we'll power this up okay now we got the server all buttoned up so what we will do is get logged in and as you can see we have a new device here qnap raid one okay so what we're gonna have to do and we'll say yes there's i'll be changing it anyway so what we're going to do is we will stop the array because anytime you make changes remember you gotta stop it so that you can make changes now we'll go down here we will add pool we'll call it cache and we're only going to dedicate one slot i mean it's it, it's it'd be redundant to do two because then you'd have a dual raid one but we're going with just that for right now now that we've created a pool we'll go into unassigned drives and we'll go down here and pick up the qnap device now see it's already said 240 gig and i put two 240 gig strips in it so at a hardware level and this confirms it, that it is already doing raid one for us we've got that so we will click on start and it's probably going to complain about drives not mountable we'll see what it does here in just a bit yes unmountable unsupported partition type yeah i think and now notice it says it's got cache with a capital c if you go into the command line it's going to show cache with a lower c so we'll click on format okay format and this shouldn't take too long with being an ssd then it ought to come out pretty quick bingo already done there so we've got cache drive and it's set to go now i've got a little more testing to do and i'll come back and we will have some sort of chart and let you see what i got because you really don't want to sit through four copies and seeing what's going on so i'll give you just the raw data be back shortly well i know you've been all anxiously awaiting on the edge of your seats for these results so here's what i found and i did several passages just to make sure they had this right now first i'm going to go with the wired one this is the one that really shocked me uh I, I didn't know to what to expect so we started out with the 30 gig file transfer same set of files every time a little over 26 minutes without the cache drive but it came in right at eight minutes with the cache drive so i uh, that makes it 
worthwhile considering doing. I've got another Unraid server that I'm already looking at getting a uh, cache drive for it. And then for wireless, uh, some difference, not as dramatic as wired, but then you're getting into some of the uh, the functionality of wireless. And I don't have the, I've got EO211 AC, but I don't have all the latest Wi-Fi 6 stuff, which would make a difference to an extent. But still, both of these are well worth taking a look at and considering putting a cache drive in yours. Now, one more thing that we've got to do. We've already copied the files over onto cache, and you can see here, once we've got a cache set up, then it shows you how much it's currently full, that it's active, and we can see here different things, parameters you can change. That's not what we've really got to worry about. If we go under settings, scheduler, not that's not the most intuitive, but if you don't do this next step, then the files will never move off the cache drive. So there's two ways you can do this, and you can use them both, or you can use just one. Now, in my case, since I'm not going to be using this heavily day in, day out. I mean, basically I turn this on probably a couple of days a week. That's going to change as I get some more VMs and plugins up and running. So you can just go down here to settings, scheduler, and then you can go down here to the lower left corner where it says move now. And then that will move everything off of the cache drive onto your spinning magnetic media. That's one way to do it. The other thing is we go down here and remove settings. The days that I have this on, I'm probably going to be copying a fair amount. Doing it daily is not something I want to do because I may shut these things down two thirds of the day in two thirds into the day. So what I'm going to do is go down here to hourly and we can say either every hour, every two hours, if you want it to log and see what's going on, then certainly enable that. And then you can see what has happened as a result. Now you can do both of these. I'm probably for right now going to do just the manual move. Now, as you're getting used to a cache drive before you fully commit to this, I do encourage you to check the files after they've been moved, make sure that if it's a project file or whatever file happens to be, say like for the video editing software use, I'm going to check that to make sure that it's intact and that nothing happened. Because if it did, this is a point where you need to stop and figure out what's happened. Really, I think at this point, it's fairly straightforward. And this is why I liked the QNAP devices because we've got RAID 1 tolerance. If one of those M drives fails, and I would expect to see an error up here if there is a problem, then we've got a fallback to know what's going on and then you're still up and running where you have just the single drive if it gets corrupted or has problems you may not know it until it's too late so again worth the option of considering your mileage may vary but at least you have two different options of which to use a cache drive and then how you set it up. Now we also want to make sure, and I think I went over this once before, but you go under shares and at this point media, we've got a little, okay, so here's the, there's the warning sign that says some files are unprotected. Okay, that's because they're on the cache drive. As soon as we invoke moving the files off the cache drive to the main one, then we're okay. Because see, it doesn't realize we're running RAID 1. You have the option of a cache pool. You can say preferred, only use it, yes, no. Again, that's, that's your call, but especially for anything that you want to make sure when you're copying that you've got it protected, then you definitely want to say, and then use the cache pool, and then you could have more than one pool. So it's possible that you could have things split. So again, that is your choice. I'm only running just the one cache pool for right now, but that at least gets you up and running. And by all means, when you do this, and you should see a video link right here, make sure you put this on a UPS because having it RAID 1 is not going to help you at all if you lose power while it's in the process of copying to the flash drive or copying from because you still could still have some file corruption. So again, use the, use a UPS. You look at that other video I did, and that should get you started to where you really will have a fairly trouble-free situation. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.